breaking barriers and bridging the gaps between patients and doctors. Welcome to Brainstorming with the Docs and your co-hosts, Dr. Glenn Harrison and Dr. Colby Condos. Hey everybody, welcome back. Dr. Colby Condos, Dr. Glenn Harrison. So today we are going to be brainstorming about a condition that affects millions of Americans and people worldwide each and every year and is one of the actual largest reasons for lost time and productivity at work and that is going to be musculoskeletal pain um, you know low back pain one of the biggest biggest causes of opiate uh, consumptions whether it's like chronic low back pain um, which is a total crisis in America right now so today we're going to break down you know some common medical treatments of low, uh, musculoskeletal pain low back pain whatever you want to call it um, some non-traditional uh, approaches to helping manage it, and maybe some strategies that are overlooked when you're trying to manage uh, chronic musculoskeletal complaints. But before we get started with that, man, how's your week going? <laughs> it's going good. It's a fast week. It's a very, very fast week. I don't know what's happening. I know we were talking about the weather before. Maybe the cooler temperatures is what's doing it. How about you? Yeah, it's going good, my man. Uh, just busy. Got a, got a two-year-old now, so between trying to juggle <laughs> her and a business and my home life and being a good husband and and you're sleeping yeah barely sometimes I don't right? remember I don't remember your wife saying you were being a good husband but uh, yeah <laughs> I, I trying saw, trying it's work in progress right I saw a joke earlier that was like I gave my my husband a, a get better soon card but he's not actually sick I just want him to get better <laughs> <laughs> good stuff good stuff so musculoskeletal pain um, yeah, to jump right into it, it is, it is terrible. It is, it is, it's a life changer. You know, I, I dealt with serious back pain. That was, that's what I think I've told you that that's what got me into chiropractic way back. And that's what made me pursue that. I injured myself in mine engineering and, and I, I did everything under the sun. And the only thing that could get me back in my case back was chiropractic care, but it, um, I was working as a physical laborer in the mining sector to pay for school and, uh, and I wasn't able to work. So it was compromising my entire future. And that's just one story of this. We get into the opioid crisis. We get into all the, all the pharmaceutical addictions, trying to manage these, these musculoskeletal pain. It is, it's destroying lives. So I think this is a extremely, extremely important podcast and video for people to watch where they can see what can be done. Okay. So I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think this is commonly overlooked. Absolutely. And like you said, I mean, it can be totally debilitating. How many people do you think each year go on uh, disability because they can't bend over, you know, they can't lift anything. Um, and not only that, can you go on like disability or go have a permanent disability, but then it affects not only your ability to work, but also your home life when you can't pick your kid up anymore. You can't pick up a gallon of water or, or your grocery sacks uh, or whatever because of the, the amount of pain that you're in and, and it affects tons of people. So uh, definitely going to be a very valuable one to a lot of people uh, this week. I'm pretty excited about it because I mean, coming from a chiropractic background, this is something that both of us have maybe a little bit more exposure with um, and experience with. And especially with people who are not responsive to maybe some other alternatives, we're going to kind of break down some ideas about maybe uh, some avenues that you can go down to maybe explore some different options for helping you manage some of that pain. So yeah. Yeah, let's, let's jump right into it, man. So okay. why don't you just break down, say someone walks in and they've got low back pain. Um, you know, why don't, why don't you break down or any musculoskeletal complaint, but we'll just kind of, I guess, hone in on low back pain uh, okay. because it's the most common cause of, of lost time at work. And yeah. So if I get a low back pain case in, I'm going to get them a plane ticket and they're going to come visit you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, low, low back pain. I, of course, you know, background with functional medicine, I would really want to know, is there a problem? Is there, is there a herniated disc? Is there a fracture? Is there any of that? If it's only musculoskeletal, which I guess which we're talking about today, well, then I would, I would look at, at the pieces of, is it ligamentous? Is it musculoskeletal? Is, you know, there's, that's what I would do. I, I think if you went to, for, different to different providers they'd look at it in a different way you know i'm a little bit biased with a chiropractic background I, I personally don't practice i know you still practice some chiropractic um but i i don't do any of that so i'm i would 
I would look at trying to get an inflammatory condition down, but maybe before we go into that, maybe what would be a better way to jump into this is what are the different strategies, natural strategies for low back pain, musculoskeletal pain? Sure. So well, three. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, three. Like three. In my office, um, I just try to determine like, if is it actually like a, a cause of mechanical low back pain, right? So mm-hmm. is it a compressive injury? Do you have a disc that's bulging or herniated or extruded that's pressing on stuff that you don't want to pushing on? You know, is there like a space occupying lesion in there? Is there some, you know, strain, sprain of muscle ligaments? Um, you know, is there instability within the joint? These are all things that you need to look at initially to, to kind of determine like, okay, what is the, what is the cause? What is the mechanism that's causing this, this pain? Um, and then you can kind of address, you know, okay, this is, you know, this is a, a extruded disc where it's pressing somewhere. That's going to be a case where you probably want to go in for a surgical consultation. You know, okay, this is a, you know, a disc bulge. This might be an option for some, you know, physical therapy or, or manual manipulation. Um, you know, this is a actual like central mechanism where your brain has wound up these pain pathways. So now you're perceiving things as painful where it wasn't before. That's right. Um, or like your low back is completely inflamed and it, all this inflammation is causing spontaneous firing of your pain receptors. Like this is why pain, especially in the low back is so difficult to treat in certain cases because it can be one, it can be two, it can be all of them. Um, and that's why it's really important to have an understanding and to have a team around you that can help you break down that condition and, and put the pieces in place to help manage the whole thing. Because in, in, in many cases, one, one is not necessarily going to be like the magic silver bullet that takes care of all. This is why you have to have a couple of different options. Yeah. Um, I, I completely agree with that. There's no one size that fits all and it doesn't matter, you know, where you go there. I don't think there's one provider that has all the tools. Um, the three big strategies that I see in the natural world or the non-medical, non-surgical world for back pain or back disorders, um, one is um, active care. So meaning that you're active in your care, um, the provider or the practitioner is working with you and you're actually moving through it. A, a lot of things you'll see, this is, is physical therapy where the, the provider is getting the the, the patient to move through certain motions and things like that. Um, what other p- active care strategies would you say there are? Dr. Colby? Yeah. So there's a, uh, you know, yoga. Yeah. Uh, there's like McKinsey exercises. This mm-hmm. is some of the stuff that uh, if you have low back pain, you've probably had exposure to um, exercise is going to be huge. Um, you know, you know, all those things are definitely warranted. I know that we talked a little bit when you were, telling me how you kind of classified all these. It was like the active and the passive and then like your ability to break it down from a neural inflammatory or an inflammatory standpoint. So when you talk about the active care, basically what he's talking about, what I'm talking about is you are actively participating. Like you are making a lifestyle change. You are doing an exercise. You are, you know, physically going through the motions with whoever your physical therapist or your, your, your osteopath or your chiropractor or whoever's doing it with you. Right. Um, the passive care is going to be where you're getting like the application of therapies, maybe. So some ultrasound, some intersegmental traction, some, um, some distraction. Surgery. What's that? Surgery. Yeah. Surgery. Right. Um, so that's, those are, those are the different forms of like passive care, right? So you're not actively doing anything, but you're still receiving some sort of treatment therapy or management technique um, for your specific condition. And then, you know, another, another form of like passive therapy would be like a a prescription pain medication, right? Mm -hmm. So an opiate, or I have a patient right now that actually has a pain pump that directly injects fentanyl into his, um, spine, which is crazy. Fentanyl is like crazy, crazy dangerous. So that's kind of one of my more, uh, more maybe out, not my typical normal low back pain patient. Um, but, and then you got to look at controlling the inflammatory cascade. I'm going to let you go ahead and roll on that because okay. I've got a couple ideas about some other things. that make people look. <laughs> So the inflammatory component. So you get all these body workers and surgical workers and orthopedic surgeons. They're, they're, wor- they're working on all of that. They're working on structure. They're working on uh, addressing these tissues that are being damaged. But when it comes to the, 
the, the inflammatory component, you know, if you are, if you, if you're consuming something that's inflammatory, meaning your immune system is being irritated and it will, it doesn't matter where you have pain on pain in your body, it will get worse. I have clients all the time. Rheumatoid arthritis is just one example um, where it's an inflammatory arthritis. So it's aggravating joints and even sometimes spine. And if you get down the inflammatory cascade in their body, I don't even touch a joint in, in my office. I don't touch a joint and everybody gets significant joint uh, recovery, or I should say musculoskeletal recovery just from addressing the inflammatory component. Now, is that the only one that's needed? By no means. Body work is powerful. It's very powerful. But like you were saying, Dr. Colby, there is no one fix for everybody. The people that have the best outcomes are addressing all of that. They're considering passive efforts um, like massage therapy and, you know, sometimes even chiropractic can be passive. Um, the, they're, they're considering the active therapies. Oh, Order just walked in. I see that. <laughs> my, hey, little mask, my little mascot here. And then, and then the, so addressing the inflammatory component, the, the musculoskeletal efforts that are passive and musculoskeletal efforts that are active. I think if you, if you have a rounded look at that, there is nothing that you can't get past with musculoskeletal skeletal pain. Yeah. I think no, that uh, more. we got to yeah, talk about the, the neuro the one that, that really gets you the, that I at least struggle with. And I think most, most practitioners do. And most people that suffer from this type of condition is like when you have like a structural component. So for instance, we'll use the guy with the pain pump, right? Um, guy had significant trauma to his low back actually had like fusion in his, in his low back. And now he has like long term, long standing issues with pain, uh, in his, in his spine, right? Because he's got, now he's got bio, you know, degenerative changes and he's actually changed the biomechanical forces in his low back. Um, so he's going to have issues when, what can really, really complicate this, this sort of thing is when you actually plasticize. So for what, when I say plasticize is like your brain and your body has the ability to make pathways more efficient and those can be both good and bad, right? So we've talked about neuroplasticity in some of our other uh, videos and other podcasts and it does it doesn't necessarily neuroplasticity doesn't always isn't always a good thing. So people who frequently fire a pain pathway can actually make that pathway more efficient and easier to fire with less activation. So if someone is in chronic in a chronic state of pain, their brain is like, okay, we're gonna fire this thing over and over and over again. Why don't we make it more efficient so it requires less energy? So okay. less 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 pain stimulus, less irritation less irritation creating the same or the same even result. more um outcome pain symptom. yeah yeah so and and it's fast right because mm -hmm. you don't want to use as much energy so these pathways become bigger faster stronger less stimulus with the same outcome mm -hmm. um this is when you have to look at like a central pain wind up um and that that can be harder to break but i mean there's options for doing it you just have to look at maybe what the mechanism is um, has it been corrected? You know, if it is a, an actual mechanical issue, has that been, you know, corrected? Was it, a, was it a disc or, you know, whatever, a fracture. And then you have to look at how are we going to change this? And, and you can do that with a variety of different, you know, management techniques, whether that's vestibular input where you're going to do like some postural stuff. Um, is it biofeedback, which has been shown to be beneficial where you have like that patient watching them you know, doing specific exercises where they're watching themselves in a full length mirror. There's a lot of different options. So that's one that maybe is a little bit overlooked. Mm -hmm. And if you're not implementing that into your strategies, as far as like trying to, you know, manage these types of conditions, then maybe that's something that you should look at adding to your care. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think to the takeaway from this whole, this whole podcast to wrap it up is, is musculoskeletal pain and symptoms are, are really creating an, an, uh, an epidemic in pharmaceutical consumption, an epidemic in surgical procedures, and, and it's destroying the lives of many, the families of many. And if, if you listening to this or watching this are suffering with that, don't accept it. Don't accept it as the normal. I didn't when I injured myself. And consider all the aspects, the body work, the passive and active care, as well as the inflammatory component. 
and you know, Dr. Colby, I know you you work with a lot of a lot of the musculoskeletal stuff right in the office. I keep prying on you, and I want you to do more neuro stuff if possible remotely, because <laughs> I want to be able to send you some of my clients. Um, but the neurological component uh, you talked about, Dr. Colby, the the active and passive care with all the different forms of body work, and then of course the inflammatory component, making sure you're not consuming things or there's there's emotional stressors that are aggravating the inflammatory cascade in your body. I think if you cover all those bases and don't ignore the pharmaceutical, a lot of people are scared of drugs and surgery, and I I, I completely understand that because you you can't undo what a, what a scalpel would do, but there is a place and a time for it. It's maybe not the first place to go. I never recommend that's the first place to go, but it is an option if you exhaust all the others and you maximize your outcome with all the others. Yeah, and, and on top of that, like really having a complete picture about what's going on. You know, if I have a patient that has an extruded disc or an unstable segment in their spine because of a fracture, you can bet, get out of my office. Like mm. not, not a good candidate for what we have to offer. Um, so really it's a case-by-case -case option, but that's when you get like having the most complete picture about what's actually going on with you is, is completely invaluable. And then once you have that, like shop around, you know, yeah. surround yourself with, with uh, providers who are willing to talk with one another, who are willing to look at other options. I, I don't think I have all the op or all the answers. I'm not even close. Um, and that's where having providers that are around you that can work together and listen to what you want to achieve is is where you're going to uh, achieve the best results. I completely agree. So uh, with that being said, I think to wrap things up, if people are in your neck of the woods and you start doing some neuro work remotely, <laughs> um, how can they how can they get a hold of you and, and learn a little bit more? Yeah, so our website um, is www.northlakeschiropractic.com. Um, we are actually in the process of like maybe putting out some new stuff on our website. So if it's down, uh, please bear with us. You can also get on our Facebook page. Our Facebook page is North Lakes Chiropractic and Functional Neurology. Um, if you're in the Grand Rapids, Minnesota area, stop by. <laughs> um, what about yourself? I know that you do a lot of stuff via web and, and stuff like that. So drop your contact information as well. Yeah, probably the best place, as I always say, is to visit the website. All of our information's on there. There's a lot of content, a lot of value on that. Uh, www.drgharrison.com or just Google the Center of Functional Medicine Denver, you'll see us pop up. And, um, and yeah, we can work with a lot of cases remotely in the world of functional medicine. So that would work. Awesome. So if you guys got value out of this, if you enjoyed listening to it, you feel like maybe um, you gained some value, uh, maybe a better understanding about what's going on, please share this with your friends, family, people that you know that are suffering from this. Um, if you have other health conditions, we've broken down quite a few of those. You can check out some of our earlier recordings and our videos. Uh, we break down all sorts of stuff from like thyroid to gut health to, you know, adrenal fatigue and insufficiency and all this stuff. So all, all those are still available for you. Um, if you got, like, if you liked it, please subscribe so you can get notifications when a new one comes out. Um, if there's anything you'd like us to break down, please get a hold of us and we'd be more than happy to look at that as a possibility. Um, the next one we're actually going to break down is another one that, affects tons and tons and tons of people and uh, like, and it really hits home for me because actually my wife used to suffer from this and it's like chronic migraines. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited to go through maybe some of the, the, the signs, symptoms of that. Maybe what are some overlooked options as far as helping manage those. Um, we'll go break down her case maybe as an option mm -hmm. and yeah, hopefully you guys can get some value for that. So uh, stay tuned. All right. Thank you, Dr. Colby. Till next time, my man. Okay, bye-bye.